greetings, green treeers and other friends. As we are heading into uh, this time of semi-quarantine, quasi-quarantine, as we live in our social contact with each other, we at Green Tree thought it might be good to provide some devotional material uh, for, for you to help us connect, help you connect uh, with uh, other uh, green treeers, with your church family, and with, uh, with God. Because isolation is a really hard thing. I'm remembering, particularly on this day, uh, St. Patrick's Day, how Patrick taught the Irish that God is Trinity. He's three in one. He is his own community. And we're made in his likeness. And so we're made for connection and relationship as well. We need each other. And that's why this distance is uh, so hard for us. Um, and during this time of connection, we're also probably experiencing a great deal of anxiety. How do, how do we manage all this? How do we uh, take this all in, help our kids when our minds are swirling on all the worst case scenarios? Uh, does God have something to say to us in this moment? And I believe that he does. And it's not just a word of comfort, it's actually very practical advice um, in dealing with our anxieties. Philippians 4, four through nine says this, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worth, worthy of praise, think about these things, and what you've learned and received and heard, and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, I have to admit, um, in the past, I found this passage to be pretty difficult for two reasons. One, when I'm feeling fearful or hurt, uh, when someone tells me, hey, cheer up, it's not so bad, I mean, I just hate it. I, <laughs> it's just so frustrating uh, because I feel like they're telling me to run away and to deny how I'm feeling about things. And that leads to the second thing. I used to think that this passage was telling me uh, when it says don't be anxious for nothing, it was telling me to stuff my anxiety, to try and uh, deny it uh, when the truth was uh, I was feeling suffocated by it. Now I've come to understand this pas passage better in the sense that it was originally written. Uh, first, that joy, not happiness, but that joy can transcend my circumstances. The Apostle Paul wrote this passage from a, from a Roman imprisonment, and that was very unpleasant. It was awful for him. But Paul also knew that his destiny, uh, his ultimate fate, was secure. One would end his imprisonment and the other would not. His destiny of fellowship uh, in heaven with God. Um, Paul was destined to experience uh, absolute forgiveness, connectedness, peace, restoration as he put his, li as he put his trust in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And I've also come to understand this passage is not asking me to deny or stuff my anxiety, but to bring my anxiety, bring my fears into the light, name those fears, and then lay them side by side with my joys, compare them with my joys. And in so doing, we can find that anxiety can be faced as we remind ourselves of what is right and what is good. Uh, Philippians uh, 4 verse 8 finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there's any excellence if there's anything worthy of praise think about these things now as you begin to wrap your heart and mind around our changing so social circumstances uh, don't just read the frightening articles i'm not saying run away from what's out there, but don't just read those things. Read the encouraging articles, and they are out there. Uh, more than this, take some time to think about the joys in your life, your children and your parents. Set your mind on hopeful things, maybe by listening to uplifting music or, or watching uh, an encouraging movie or, or even doing a home project, being productive and having your kids uh, help you with it. Uh, instead of focusing on the disruption, which is very real, but instead of focusing on that, the disruption that we're going to feel over the next two or three, maybe even six months, I hope not that long, know that God is on the way to help. He's 
put sharp minds on this earth that are already developing prototype vaccines and antiviral treatments. Uh, help is on the way. And in the end, if we rest in Christ's mercy, our hope is not in avoiding death. N none of us ever get to fully escape that. Uh, our hope is in death being undone in the resurrection. And that is a powerful hope indeed. When we think on that, I don't need to stuff my anxiety. I don't need to deny it because it begins to vanish. Now, will it return? Probably. And I'll have to fight that battle in that moment. But in this moment, when we bring our anxieties into the light, compare them with our joys, in that moment we can experience peace. A peace that surpasses understanding. That's what I'm praying for for you and your family during this time. God bless.